got that on camera. Hi everyone, I'm heading out to the field to check on things. We have had more rain than I thought possible in July. Last year it felt like the sky turned off like mid-June and then didn't rain again until Labor Day. And now fast forward this summer and we're struggling to have enough days in between rain to do our proper like fertilizing and bug spraying and stuff because everything would just get washed away. But yesterday we had our stand open. It was on a Thursday. It was so hot. Our road has construction. I made at least 40 plus bouquets and I thought, oh, I'm gonna like have really expensive compost. But we had a great day. We sold almost all of our bouquets. We had a great turnout. And so I need to come out here and check on the fields after this huge storm we had, see how things are looking and then start harvesting for our Saturday morning sales. Our Saturday morning sales tend to be our biggest day. Our customers are used to coming on Saturday mornings versus like a work week time. So I'm hoping lots will come. I'm hoping to have 40, 50 bouquets made, but I need to see what, we, ooh, there's mess everywhere. Oh, the storm was so big. Let's check things out. Here's our flower stand. Clearly I did not break it down properly yesterday because my tablecloth blew away in the storm. Things are all knocked over. And this favorite part of the stand, the tent gets filled with water from the trees and just hangs there and is just like an absolute disaster. So I need to fix that. Got myself nice and soaked in doing that, but I needed to drain the water because we have our payment console right there and we have a wrap on it, but it shouldn't get soaked and stuff. But let's look how things are doing in the field. I see some sad plants. If you watched our latest field tour, I talk about everything we have in our rows and there's a lot of things that are spent that we just haven't had time yet to cut down. That's hopefully something we're gonna do on Saturday, but these two Snapdragon rows are done. I need to cut them down, maybe get a second flush out of them. But here is the last of our Lizzie's. Obviously it's been very, very picked over and some things are just sad from all this heavy rain, but I still think I can get one or two more buckets out of this row before we cut it down for a second flush. So a little bit beraggled, but still lots of good stems. Here are two, three rows of zinnias that were my first succession. Planted them uh, just at last frost in mid-April. They are about four and a half, five feet tall. Clearly we corral them, but 
sometimes they just collapse in the rain. They're starting to wind down, but definitely lots are still pickable. So I'm gonna start here with my harvesting and pick as many solid stems as I can. Probably Saturday I'll go through and do proper deadheading because I don't want them going to seed. I want them still producing for me, even though I have a fresh field. I'll show you. Gunfrina looks fine. Clearly when rain happens, stems get heavy and flop over, but once they dry out and the sun comes out, they'll be fine. Lots to pick on. This pink variety, this carmine pink, is my absolute favorite. The bubblegum pink is really cute, but I find this one's stronger stems and easier to harvest, so I'm liking it a bit more, but the colors together I think are lovely. Woo! Oh gosh! Oh my gosh! Hello, Mr. Frog! Oh, that was a huge bullfrog! Blech. Gross. Eat the bugs. Pay your rent. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so we haven't gotten around yet completely to corralling everything in our new field. And this is a bummer. This is what happens when you get two plus inches of rain in a night. Basil lays down like it's going to bed. That should be a walkway, not a basil way. So that's a bummer. Obviously these plants are completely laid down. Oh dear, these are my favorite. I gotta troubleshoot this. I'll come cut hard on them to lighten the load and then we need to get a corral set up on this side so we don't lose them. Things are definitely, definitely leaning in a way that bums me out, but that's okay. This side, so these are all my fresh successions. This is a round two succession, so the plants are much healthier and giving me bigger blooms and healthier leaves and stuff. But, hmm, it will be okay despite not feeling like it looks okay. Here's another example. My gomfrina is like completely flat. <laughs> Everything is just laid over. This is a bummer. This guy completely cracked. Not the end of the world, but I could use some days with just sunshine and not rain. But everything you're looking at here from these fields can easily get me 60, 70 bouquets a week, which is close to what we're doing and selling from our roadside stand. This small plot, I mean, it's what? It's 60 by, oh dear, 60 by 120 maybe, if I add the two fields together. So you can, and nothing is, not everything is fully producing yet. Like these aren't gonna come on till August, September. So you can get a lot of flowers from just this small amount of space if you take care of it and you probably corral things, which noted in the future. So I have to get to work. I'm gonna get my buckets out. I'm gonna try to do half of my harvesting now this morning and then the other half this evening. And then I like to make the bouquets the morning of, so that'll be my early Saturday morning chore before we open the stand and see if we can have a big Saturday like we did so well midweek. What don't you like? Oklahoma, where the wind goes up and across the plains. Good morning. Saturday here on the flower farm. Time to go check in on the early riser wife to see what she's made to that today. Let's uh, let's see what we've got. Flower bill. Fla flower house it is sale saturday flower saturday from the last batch started at 5 a.m it's seven something now averaging about 20 bouquets an hour 
which is my goal for efficiency. Almost at the end here with our buckets to get them up to the stand. I think they look pretty good. What are your efficiency tips? Let me show you. Let me wrap this one. I'll show you my line. Try to get 20, 25 an hour. I can't even get past this wall of flowers. I know you can't come over here. Well, you have long legs. You can step. And film. Step and film. Can you do it? If you knock them over, though, there's a big problem. Okay, that was stressful. Exactly. So normally I line up all my buckets by theme here on the floor, and then I can fit about six bunches on our long table here. And I start with each flower and I put them down in order and I count because we do, depending on the flowers I use in our summer bouquets, they have between 10 and 12 flowers, depending on what I'm using and the price points and stuff. And I count them and I put them down in order in bunches and then I start again and then I arrange them from the pile because I know that everything here is going in that $20 bouquet. I've hit my price point and stem count and so now I can just take the bunches and arrange them nicely to wrap instead of just like wandering to each bucket and looking at each flower and pulling it out and then they get all bunched in the bucket and tip over and you're re-putting them down and it's just that's how I used to do it and it was not going as quickly as I wanted and now in the season we're trying to do 50 bouquets each time we open the stand give or take and so for me to do that in solo with the most efficient amount of time I really needed to think about my process but another one done so now that I know this is our bouquet I can tell you how many this one has 11 stems so then I come over here this is where I have our wraps that we have pre-done. I have my bag of rubber bands, my stapler, and my snips. And so I can, I can cut them. I wrap them. I can grab my paper. I do it on this side instead of over there because that side is where the stems were and so the table can get really wet. And I'm trying to avoid like big water splotch marks on our craft paper. So then our bouquet is done. It can go in a waiting bucket. And then you can get them all done. And take them out to the stand. I've got three more. I'll have to do a final count, but with three more, I'm probably gonna be in the 50s with the amount made. And these, these were a custom order pickup that asked for particular colors. They wanted a lemonade stand theme. So white, yellow, and green. I think it's really pretty. I don't normally do color themes with our bouquets, just a mix of colors, but these are super fun. So that was fun to make. Yeah, our sunnies are on a little bit of an off cycle, so I don't have as many as I would prefer, but the Lizzie's are kind of the star of the show right now. So I think they make up for not all having sunnies. I make a giant mess on the floor and clean it up later. Or not clean it up and just leave it on the floor forever. Yeah, One of the two, it's like a compost pile.
Yes. It's time to break down the sand. We were just came out here to break it down because I don't like to leave it out when there's only a couple left. It tends to be construed as like the stragglers. Like there's something wrong with them that someone didn't buy them, but it's not. They all look beautiful. They haven't wilted in the stress or heat. We just had a customer come in and she was like, are you still open? And so she got one. So we ended up having three left. We sold more than 50, which is amazing. We were open twice this week. Thursday did amazing. Saturday did even better. Our customers are kind of used to coming on Saturday. And I think it's a successful flower stand Saturday again. So it's time to break down. I will probably give these away to neighbors. Or maybe I don't have any flowers in the house right now. So maybe I'll open them up and arrange them myself. Get to enjoy them. Did you grab the sign? Just kidding. We were shutting down the stand. We just filmed that little bit you just saw. And two ladies came like blazing in to our drive through <laughs> Do you have any more left? One lady bought one. The other lady was like, I'll take the rest. So she bought three. We have no flowers now. So we can officially say like a hundred percent sell out, which is so awesome. Makes me really happy. Our summer bouquets right now in them, you saw are primarily sunflowers, lisianthus, zinnias, some marigolds, lots of basil as our filler and a little bit of gumfrina, but I hate harvesting it. So really I'm just growing it for color from the road. But now that we're sold out and we're all empty, We'll get our keys and stuff and we take cash and we take card. I would say our people, depending on the day, it's like 60, 40 in either direction. And sometimes it switches and I can't quite tell like, why is it a more cash day or not? But for cards, we don't do Venmo, PayPal. Our customers aren't really that into it. I don't like all the fee structure and stuff. So we had an old iPad and we take square payment from our iPad kiosk and the iPad is docked and bolted in and it syncs to the Wi-Fi in the house because we're not too far. And it's just a touch screen that they follow and they can tap, chip, swipe. Super easy prompts that they follow through and check out. And it is a really fast, they're gonna think that's my finger. It's the <laughs> largest female finger ever. No, like you gotta show like the oh. emails too. Oh yeah, sorry. Continue, how many you want, yes. And you can add your email, which is really nice. Can't do that with other payment stuff. But I, this allows for a super fast checkout too for people to go through. And it just dumps into our Square account, which makes accounting easy, keeping track of everything. But our last couple flower stand videos that we did where we were selling out, things were going great. The flower stand used to be at the front of our driveway, which wasn't that big of a deal. But as we started to get more popular, I started to sell like 40, 50 bouquets a day. It was a lot of car traffic. We're on a kind of a busy country road here. And a lot of cars, just for safety and comfortability, we're having to do laps around our driveway, which is not the end of the world. But we have four kids and I'm not a helicopter parent. And I just want them to be like, go ride your bike, go play, get out of the house. And so with like strange cars driving and little ones like careening about on bikes, we were like, eh. plus everyone can see the flower farm from the road. There's high interest in what do you have, what do you have going on? And so we thought, well, how can we get people away from our private drive and closer to the flowers? And so we decided we would put through a little like drive through. So if you look here, this is the entrance. It has our beautiful sign my mom painted for us. We open that gate and then they swoop through here. They can see all the flowers behind the gate. Lots of people take selfies and pictures and then they exit out the other direction. And that has allowed for super easy-ish control of traffic, flow of traffic. People are taking a lot of selfies with like holding up their bouquet with the fields in the background. And it's, it's become a experience. event, an experience. So it's not the disconnected like pick up a bouquet in the produce section of a grocery store. It's like on Saturday morning, I'm planning, I've got my coffee. I got the kids in the car. I'm coming to get myself flowers. It's beautiful. I can see what's blooming. I can take a picture, send it to my friends, that sort of thing. And it's an incentive for people to come to us. 
instead of like a farmer's market style. So I mentioned we lived on a kind of busy country road. We live right off of famous Route 66. And on the other end of our road is just another much smaller highway. So we're kind of like sandwiched between the two. And our road connects them. And so a lot of people that are like cutting across pick our road instead of some of the other ones that go because you have to make more turns and whatnot. So this is actually fairly busy. So we get a lot of traffic, eyes on traffic of people like, what's that? What's that? We have had a lot of customers who are like, I've been watching you build this. I've been seeing this color I wanted to see. We have husbands, a lot of work trucks and working guys during the day will drive by. And then I know they're telling their wives, some of them often stop in and buy flowers like on their way home, that sort of thing. So it's great frontage advertisement. But another thing that's awesome about having the stand here right next to the field is Eric and I were working in the field together this morning. The whole time the stand was open, so we weren't sitting at a farmer's market for four hours. We were actually being productive, which is another perk of the flower stand. We were just right out here. We were cutting down all of our old sunflowers. But people see us, and they want to chat. They want to talk. And I, it's personality dependent. If you're kind of the person that wants to, like, hide in your flower field and just produce the bouquets and, like, front of shop, back of shop, you might not like this element, but I'm a people person. I'll talk to a rock. And so I like getting to interact with the customers. I think they like talking to me. Often they'll ask like, what is this flower? What do you have that growing? And I get to chat with them. And so I think there's that like relational proximity that hopefully builds loyalty and love of our farm and our story and what we're growing. And it's not, again, a disconnected shopping experience like a grocery store, but not only can they see where their flowers are coming from in the field, but they get to meet me, they get to see Eric, they see our kids running around. They're like, these are the people that are growing these beautiful flowers. And I love them. I love their story. I love supporting them. And hopefully that translates to multiple purchases and years of support in the future. So again, we love having the farm up here. It does mean we have to work a bit harder on presentation. You know, we, we do have to think about like, hey, we left that out, we need to go clean that up, we need to pick up that tool, sometimes we forget, but it does require a little more of a polished presentation, but it's kind of my husband and I's personality, and I think it also is a good incentive to keep things really sharp and looking nice, because you have that accountability of things can't look like a disaster, so it's a good kick in the pants sometimes to get projects done that you've been ignoring. You should... really beautiful. So when we first opened the stand, it was sometime in June, it was like pandemonium chaos our neighbors were joking at joking and texting us being like do we need to come down and do traffic control at one point i think we counted like five or six cars in the drive through and three or four people lined up on the road and even some women that had their husbands drive them were jumping out of the car w walking in while he went through the car line so they can get flowers so it was a little bit of like oh my gosh this is working and people love it but it's, I mean, it's more of a stressful environment for our customers. And around the same time, we really started hitting big success. The field started producing more. So instead of having like 30 bouquets out, I was able to put out 50 or more. And that has spread out the, the frenzy a bit. And people aren't as panicked of like, I have to get here right at nine. People were showing up at I think 8.25 was our earliest when we opened at 9 a.m. Super happy people love our flowers and want our flowers. I don't want them to feel that stressed. So I'm really thankful that like the summer fields are doing wonderful. And so I can have a lot of bouquets. And like those ladies came here at two o'clock. That never would have happened a month ago with how the field was producing. So I think we're also now conveying to people that we have an abundance of flowers and it doesn't have to be quite as much of a mad rush. And we noticed today because there were, I think the max was like maybe five cars here at a time people were taking those pictures and some of them were stopping and visiting with each other. People are less frantic and thinking we're gonna sell out immediately. And so it's making the experience a little bit calmer. And I know next year we'll have even more flowers and we'll be able to do that in the spring as well. So I told you all about our road. It's under construction right now because they're repaving it. It's our turn to be repaved. So they've just been making a huge chompy asphalt mess. It's now gravel and dust. So people are just like flying at mock speed with dust everywhere, which I don't love. But probably in the next month, they'll resurface it. The downside of not having a bunch of cracks and potholes is all of the bros are going to go like Mach 5. Oh, it's not here. just bros. Is it like crazy women? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, not looking forward to that. But that's just 
I would rather though live on a little bit busier road to get all of the traffic and ease of purchasing that we get than to live like a mile down a driveway that people don't know we exist or what's going on. I just don't think you're going to get roadside traffic if you're that disconnected from the location of your farm or people have to travel pretty into what they feel like is private property or deep country. It's a barrier of purchasing, but people are very used to 450 road. They've been seeing the flowers and they know they can visualize like they're driving up the road and they're like, this is obviously a flower farm. This is where I'm going. It's not the awkward, like, do I turn here into your personal driveway? You know, that sort of thing. So our setup, I think is. Although some people, they don't got any problem going in your driveway. Okay. Well, <laughs> some, people have bound- some people have boundary problems. Some people like to get out and. Just walk around my walk house. Around and walk around my house. Maybe I let themselves into the, the gardens. Please don't do that. So we're pretty friendly, and I appreciate that everyone usually is saying, like, oh, I just, my grandma used to do, yeah. she used to do all that growing, and so this is so cool what you're doing here. Because you're on a slope and you're the tallest I look human like, ever. It's like... <laughs> yeah, I should come on this side. You're like Goliath. There we go. This is more of our normal. <laughs> more than normal. You are like the Nephilim there for a second. Ooh, Nephilim reference. <laughs> We're very excited about all this. We're back inside. Our flower cottage is air conditioned, which is nice. But after playing with all the beautiful flowers, selling all the beautiful flowers, now we have the unglamorous task of cleaning up all of the carnage. Sweeping. Dirt, washing, stems, well, the not pretty side of flower farming, but it's been a great week. We live in a very big town, so people are like, hey, Bill, hey, Nancy. And, like, oh, we talking. got the accents now. Did I do an accent? Yeah. Hey, Bill. Yes, but we're in Oklahoma getting some flowers. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's go in the B-roll at the end. <laughs> but is that what Oklahoma people talk like? I don't know. This is my, like, cowboy. <laughs> Cowboy work. Is that what they do? We love Oklahoma. Don't think I hate Oklahoma. What? It's only going to be a couple 20s probably. Because you already collected? I already collected, yeah. Uh, it won't be a dramatic opening? That's not bad. We've already collected all the cash today. A heart attack with that. Aw, no money today. Uh, everyone stole from us. Aw. 